Edis is a very, very flexible editing system, and the engineers have tried hard to make sure that you can use it in the way that suits exactly you. I want to spend a little bit of time on the settings, not too much, but just to try to bring to your attention some things that are particularly worth knowing about that you may just prefer to be one way or the other. Let's start off by having a look at the system and application settings. So the system settings are things that are specific to this physical machine. And this is where you're going to have things like the decks that are set up, anything that's not likely to change from machine to machine. And let's just have a little look through. Under the application settings, well, I've got an option to stop playback at frame drop. Not too important when you're generally editing and using the machine, but if you're playing out to tape, it's probably a good idea to tick that box. Edius uses a chunk of your system memory to play ahead of itself in a frame buffer. And this is a wonderful feature because it means that if you get to an effect or multiple layers of video that are just too much for the machine to play in real time, provided the buffer's full, there's a good chance it'll make it through without needing to render. And you can specify up to half a gig of memory to be used for the playback buffer. However, depending on how much memory you've got on your machine, you might find that it gets a little bit unstable using the full half gig. The thing to do is probably start with fully half a gig, see what the performance is like and work your way down from there. But if you've got a reasonable amount of RAM, you're probably going to be okay. Under the capture settings here, we've got a few interesting options, particularly to do with the automatic detection of scene changes. And this means that if you've got a DV tape, something like that, that has extra metadata about the recording, Edis can automatically break the files up into pieces and give you individual clips in your bin. That's pretty handy. One tick box worth having here is to confirm the file name at capture. That's very helpful because otherwise, when you do record video from tape, you tend to end up with rather a lot of numbers and letters instead of useful file names. If you should need to render an effect, here are our render settings, then you've got options for the sorts of things that will be rendered. And rendering is very straightforward to do in Edius. If I get an effect on here, maybe I'll just put... Ooh, let's see, a mosaic on this guy. Then all I need to do is go to the render menu and choose either render entire project or render this sequence or render between in and out marks and so on or render cursor area. It just gives me a number of options for which part of my project is going to be rendered. When I render an effect, a file is going to be created that looks like the outcome of the effect that I've applied. So you'll notice that I do have some standard keyboard shortcuts for these. I can do the selected region and transitions with Shift-G, or I can render and add the output to the timeline as a new flattened layer with Shift-Q. This is very, very useful. The benefit of rendering is that no matter how complex the effect, Edius is just playing back one flat layer of video. So it may look complex, but that's because you're seeing the output of a complex effect. Very rare that you need to do that for most edits with Edius, particularly if you're working with standard definition material. Profile we've looked at already, and this allows you to generate multiple users on the same machine. And the project presets allow you to define the project types that are going to be used. And again, this is a bit of a strange one for me because you can't access these settings from the project preset selection window. You can only do it by generating them here in the system settings. I guess it kind of makes sense if you consider that there are some users who will be restricted users who won't be able to change these settings. That might not seem desirable to you if you're a lone editor working with your own machine. But if you're working in a broadcast environment, it can be a real godsend. Then under hardware here, we've got the device presets for our decks that are connected. We've got preview options for output to a display monitor. Again, this will vary depending on the hardware that you've got connected. And then we've got importer exporter settings. And these are unique to the individual file formats that you're working with. My advice is that if you do need to work with a particular format, that you Do your research for that one format instead of going through every single one. That could take quite a while. In fact, you can put many After Effects effects into Edius and they will work. And there's uh, quite a few options for the features that you can use. However, you will need to render all of them. They're not going to be real time. Down here under Input Controller, I've got some options for external faders and jog shuttle devices. There's quite a few devices that are compatible with Edius that you can plug in to give you something to get hold of while you're editing. If I move over now to the project settings just for a moment, I just want to draw your attention again to the option to change the current setting. If you change the current setting, you can do quite a lot to adapt the media that you're conforming to. Now, the issue for me is, of course, that I want to be able to toggle between different formats 
pretty quickly. And you can't do that from inside of the project settings panel. You can choose existing presets and you can modify the presets, but there are some limitations. If you want to really make changes, you need to generate a new project preset. It's not that bad to do, but it's just one of those things that you need to go around and about for.